the truth the girls. Hi everyone. Sorry if I I don't have any makeup on and maybe I look like Kermit the Frog because of no mascara, but I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about fluoride. Okay, so there's this article here on uh, We Are a Change. Fluoride officially classified as a neurotoxin in world's most prestigious medical journal, which by which they mean the Lancet. So is this true? I'm sure you all want to know. Um, it's true. Uh, well, first of all, this isn't this isn't news. This is like kind of old news, but it's recirculating. Is it true? Where does this come from? Because they didn't show the links to the source. Uh, here is the Lancet Neurology, March 2014. Neurobehavioral effects of developmental toxicity. And they basically talk about all these behavioral and developmental disorders that children seem to be having now with increasing frequency and what role environmental toxins, uh, neurodevelopmental toxins could play. And they say in 2006, uh, we did a systematic review and identified five industrial chemicals as neurodevelopmental neurotoxicants, lead, methylmercury, polychlorinated biphenyls, arsenic, and toluene. Since 2006, epidemiological studies have documented six additional developmental neurotoxicants, manganese, fluoride, chlorpyrifos, dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane, the name alone is toxic, and tetrachloroethylene and polybrominated diphenyl ethers. I don't know why I bothered to tell you last three because who's going to remember those names? But anyway, point is fluoride was on the list. So that's where this comes from. Um, at that time, it wasn't new news either. Uh, here is an article from the Huffington Post from March 2013 by actually Dr. Mercola. Harvard study confirms fluoride reduces children's IQ. Now, I'm going to give you the links to all of this so that I don't have to ramble on here forever. You guys can go check out whatever you want more information on. But it's just to sum it up, um, what he's talking about here, 32-page report. It was like a meta-analysis of all these studies that had been done in different countries, especially in China. Uh, meta-analysis of 27 studies published over 22 years specifically targeted studies carried out in rural China that have not been widely disseminated, thus complementing the studies that have been included in previous reviews and risk assessment reports. So they went out of their way to find data from somewhere else, which is kind of good because, you know, there could be conflicts of interest, there could be a lot of different factors, so they went out of their way to find diverse data. And so the results suggest that fluoride may be a developmental neurotoxicant that affects brain development at exposures much below those that can cause toxicity in adults. So in, in those studies, the kids were not getting their fluoride from fluoridated water or from toothpaste, they were just getting it from environmental exposure, as in in some places there's just high uh, fluoride content in the water or whatever. And, and so what they found is that children are maybe especially susceptible to the toxic effects of fluoride. Here's another article on this, Fluoride and IQ, the 50 studies. So, well, what they found was that the more fluoride they were exposed to, the, the lower their IQs were. So it seemed to affect their mental development. Actually, Dr. Mercola mentions the specific parts of the brain that are likely affected. So in this article here, which is on fluoridealert.org, um, they mention, as of April 2016, a total of 57 studies have investigated the relationship between fluoride and human intelligence, and a total of 38 studies have investigated the relationship between fluoride and learning slash memory in animals. Of these investigations, 50 of the 57 human studies have found that elevated fluoride exposure is associated with reduced IQ while 37 of the 39 animal studies have found that fluoride exposure impairs the learning and or memory capacity of animals. So there you have it, that there, there is evidence that it affects learning and memory and intelligence, not just in humans, but in animals. And as you know, uh, I, I think the last I heard about 70% of drinking water in the US is fluoridated. I'm not sure what the stats are in Canada. I live in Montreal. We don't have fluoride here. Uh, but 
fluoride has come under more scrutiny lately because of things like this and also the fact that you know people have different bodies and how can they all get the same dose of fluoride and all deal with it the same way what do they have impaired renal function or they have to drink a lot more water or they're smaller or they're bigger it's not a one-size-fits-all and it seems kind of unethical to you know for the government to decide to put something in the water for medical reasons like for the sake of your teeth when uh, you know this this doesn't give anybody the opportunity to refuse it if they're not okay with the risks associated with it but here's another thing that you probably don't know about fluoride um, common food items could contain 180 times more fluoride than tap water it could be because of the kind of pesticides that are used or I'm not sure how exactly it gets in the environment oh my computer just crashed well anyhow I'm just gonna finish this without my computer and there the vacuum cleaner sound is gone um, well anyway check out this article and you'll see that they mention uh, that different foods have different content of fluoride I looked this up actually specifically when this fluoride question came up because I remember reading that grape juice is particularly high in fluoride and uh, it said in this article here that in grapes the acceptable levels was 55 parts per million which is a lot more than you, which is a lot more than you get in the tap water and and so apparently when it's made into grape juice it's still pretty concentrated so some people are worried about avoiding fluoride you know consuming it and they don't realize that there's a lot of fluoride in some of the foods they're eating so I thought you might want to know that so, so, you know, that's my breakdown of this, that A, fluoride being toxic, it's not really new news. It, it is, in the journal, they did say it's a neurotoxicant, and um, it's dose-dependent, and I, like many people, don't think it should be added to the drinking water. And, and I'll leave it at that. Uh, thanks for listening to me. Uh, thanks for leaving your comments. Don't forget to check out the links. Thanks for giving me a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time.